What's up YouTube, it's your boy Nash here, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another episode of WWE's Biggest Issue. I gotta be really quick about this, about, about this week's episode, because I have a really bad headache, unfortunately. Um, I've kinda had this headache ever since I got COVID a couple weeks ago, and it's still hurting like hell. I know I just took an, I, and, and... And uh, and ibuprofen, but but still, um, I I know I shouldn't have said that on you know here on YouTube with the whole you know you know, you know with the algorithm and all that beat you know and all that BS, but um, but I but I just wanted to give you guys uh, a heads up on my condition. Yes, I still have a headache. Hopefully, it goes away soon. But anyway. That being said, welcome, welcome to another episode of WWE's Biggest Issue. This week's episode, <clears throat> excuse me, is actually one that is going to be a bit of a controversial episode. Then again, I could, I could be wrong. And there's been rumors as of late. There's been a lot of rumors the last 24, maybe 48 hours, um, that apparently WWE is planning to bring back general managers not just across Raw and SmackDown but also NXT excuse me and the question is are, are we go going to see that? could we see general managers return? what are the pros and cons of having GMs back in WWE? Well, that's the thing. Um, the thing is, is that... Is that over the years, when it came to... When it came to... Um, When it comes to 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 WWE, we've had, especially on Raw, um, especially on Raw, we have had so many, um, we've had so many, um, so many general managers in in WWE, you know, you know, we've had general managers like AJ Lee, GMs like Booker T and Teddy Long and whatnot. And to show you guys exactly who became the first Raw general manager, it ended up being Eric Bischoff, the the current now a a WWE Hall of Famer. Um. Where his run as GM lasted from July 15, 2002 to, to December 5th, 2005, or 2005, or I guess November, or I guess, I guess November 6th, and then of course November 6th, 2006, he came back. For one night only. Um, then of course we had we had we had Chief Mo What is come on. No. 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 We don't need Thank you. Um we had uh Chief Morley or, or I guess Sean Morley, who is the chief of staff. Um his run lasted November 25th, 2002 to May 5th, 2003. So, almost a year. Almost a year. Then, of course, we had Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was co-GM, which lasted... Which lasted for quite a while. Um, um, April 28th, 2003 to November 16th, 2003. And then from December 29th, 2003 to March 29th, 2004... 
where he where he proclaimed himself as the sheriff with full GM powers. And then McFoley came into the fold as co-GM for about two weeks. And then Vince McMahon came in, came into the fold and acted and acted as GM of Raw for the latter part of for 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 the latter part of about five maybe six months, um, and then of course Jonathan Coachman, and then William Regal came into the fold and act and became GM from July second two thousand seven. To May nineteenth, two thousand eight, and then Coach came back in, into the fold. Then, then Mike Adamley, Stephanie McMahon, Vicky Guerrero, Bret Hart, supposedly, and then Triple H, John Laurinaitis, the anonymous G Raw GM, which was. It was a weird one, I can tell you that right now. Um, AJ Lee as well. Um, and then Vicky Guerrero, who is the managing supervisor. Brian Maddox, The Authority. Vicky Guerrero once again. The Authority once again. Daniel Bryan, The Anonymous Raw GM. Mick Foley. Kurt Angle. And then, of course, Baron Corbin became the last... GM, or I guess became the constable of Money Night Raw, which was, it was just bad. It was just bad. And then, of course, on, and, and then, of course, for SmackDown, we've had, we've had Stephanie McMahon, Paul Heyman, Kurt Angle, Teddy Long, Vicky Guerrero, Teddy Long once again. John Laurinaitis, Booker T, Vicky, Vicky Guerrero once again, The Authority, Daniel Bryan, and then Paige became the last GM before she decided to, um, uh, be, uh, before she decided to leave WWE. Then ECW, ECW had, had, had only four GMs, Paul Heyman, Armando Estrada, Teddy Long, and Tiffany. NXT, we had the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, who actually acted as, who was the interim GM for about, for about three, maybe four months. Then JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield, the Hall of Famer, became GM from September, from September 2013 to July 2014, so about... What maybe ten months, and then William Regal just dom just became GM ever since then, which was from July thirty first, twenty fourteen, to to January fifth of last year. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, and then as far as NXT UK and of course and, and two hundred five live. Uh, Johnny Saints became became be, ended up becoming GM of NXT UK since its inception back in June of 2018, and then of course, and then of course, uh, Drake Maverick became the 205 Live GM up until from January 30th, 2018 to 2020. Um. Um. Yeah, so there's been there's been a few GMs over the years. There's been there's been quite a few shady GMs, you know, obviously Vince being you know being one of them, coach being one of them, Regal being one of them, Mike Adamley, um uh uh Vicky uh uh Vicky Guerrero um John John Laurinaitis, obviously, um, Brian Maddox. We've had quite a few shady uh, people, if you will. Um, even you know, even on SmackDown, there's there there have been quite a few shady people. Kurt Angle, 
being being one of the shady GMs, Vicky Guerrero. So it so the way I see it, is it wise to have a GM for Raw, SmackDown, and NXT? No. I'm being honest, no. Because the way I see it. Well, actually, you know what? Actually, you know what? You know what? I retract my statement. Yes and no. Yes, because obviously, you know, WWE official, you know, WWE official Adam Pearce has been run, you know, had been running Raw and SmackDown ever since, ever since, you know, Raw, you know, Raw and SmackDown had to be hosted from 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 the Performance Center in in Orlando. So he basically acted as as the GM of of both Raw and SmackDown. You know, and of course, um, you know, Regal, you know, Regal, you know, you know, remained GM of NXT even through COVID. And, uh, honestly, I think NXT, uh, I don't know, guys, I'm, guys, I apologize. I, it's my headache. I'm not making sense. I apologize, but, um, but. Pierce had been running has been running Raw and SmackDown since it had to be hosted from from the piece from the Performance Center in Orlando, you know, in March in March of of 2020, and that's an awfully long time. Three years, that's that that's a that's hella long, you know. And Regal, he he, even through COVID, you know, he still ran ran NXT as GM. And the way I see it, the way I see it, if we do get GMs across all three brands, Raw, SmackDown, and and NXT, for 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 Monday Night Raw, I think the person that becomes GM would probably have to be a Hall of Famer. I think, in my opinion. A part of me wants to say Teddy Long because Teddy Long was an amazing general manager. You guys might not might not have seen it, but he was probably one of the damnest general managers ever because his G his role as GM started on SmackDown July on from from July 29th, 2004 to to September 21st, 2007. In which, excuse me, you guys know what's up, guys. The fucking mucus, it won't go down. Anyway, that was when that was when Vicky Guerrero took over, and then Teddy Long, and then Teddy Long regained control. Of of SmackDown from from April tenth two thousand nine to a to to April first twenty twelve. That was when um that was when John Laurinaitis took over as GM of both Raw and SmackDown. So I think if if, if there was one person who I would want to see. As general manager of of Raw, hands down, it has to be it has to be Kurt Angle. And the reason why I say Kurt Angle is because when he was GM, when he became GM of Raw the night the night after WrestleMania in twenty in twenty seventeen, he became arguably one of the greatest GMs we had we had in a while. And don't don't get me wrong, Mick, don't get me wrong, Mick Mick Foley was an amazing GM. He was no doubt about it. But Baron Corbin, let's just be real. Corbin did not like Kurt Angle. He didn't like how he was, how Kurt was running things on Raw. He was just calling it down the middle, people. Let's just be real on that. Look, let's just be real on that, guys. Okay, he was calling things down the middle as he saw fit. Plain and simple. Now, as far as who should run Friday Night SmackDown. That's a bit of a stretch. Um, it's a bit of a stretch, but I think, I think in my 
honest opinion. In my honest opinion, if there was one person who I would not, who me personally, I wouldn't mind have having as GM of SmackDown. Personally, I would say Coach. I would have to say Coach because when you think about Coach and what and the things that he did as GM of of Raw or as the executive or as Vince McMahon's executive assistant. He did such a cra- as crazy as it is for for me to admit it, but as a heel GM, he did he did an amazing job as GM of of Smack uh, of Raw. So if he can do that, imagine what he could do as GM of SmackDown. So again, these rumors they've been swirling the last the last like twenty four hours, forty eight hours or so, and. This was a topic that I wanted to, to talk about just because it's something that I have been I've always want, wanted to bring up here on on the channel. And so I want to get your guys' opinion on who should be the GM of Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. And speaking of NXT, it just it it has to be Regal. Regal, nobody could do it quite like William Regal in my honest opinion but um but I want your guys opinion let me know down in the comments below answering the question of, of the day which is this who should be the general manager of Raw who should be the GM of Smackdown and who should be the, the GM of NXT let me know down in the comments below and that will do it for this week's episode hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button if you guys are new to the channel and you guys want more episodes of WWE's Biggest Issue, which get posted every Monday. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and follow me on all my social media. Links will be in the description below, as will the info to my fan mail. It will also be in, in the description as well. And on that, this is your boy Nash, signing out.